What up, Dokoners? In less than a day, this bad boy will be dropping on Global Dokon along with Global Dokon tickets. So a little bit of a dub there for those of you who do spend a little bit on the game. Today's video is going to be tackling the age-old question, should you or should you not summon for the Golden Frieza? I've already talked about this a little bit on other videos, and I'm sure most of you guys have already shared your opinions in my videos. But we're going to talk about this in its own separate one because I want to bring up a couple of points to once again remind you guys of what to consider before actually pulling the trigger and summoning for something like this because I really feel like on this particular situation given it's that it's going to be coming up on a legendary summon banner a dying breed of banner no less given the fact that this unit is literally replaceable on site in terms of what its primary function is there are a lot of different reasons to not summon and I want to cover all of those with some of you because those of you that are indecisive this could potentially help save you some stones of course if you guys love the character if you guys are whales or you just want to do this because you've been wanting to for so long don't forget this guy was out what in july for jp last year so it's been a little while so you know if you still want to summon i'm not going to stop you i'm simply giving you giving you my own thoughts and opinions so hopefully we can be uh we can be civil in the comments so let's just dive in and talk about my various points as to why you should not i personally think you should not summon for this unit Number one, let's just talk about the fact that he's replaceable on site. His primary function in this uh, in this capacity is to provide damage reduction. 90% damage reduction, which is insane, not only for this unit in general, but also for an LR. Very, very good. And also, he is your slot one unit for a unit that would run in the slot two, like the LR STR Cooler, Prime Battle Frieza, Transforming Frieza, any heavy hitting Wicked Bloodline character, you want this guy in your slot one, without question. Over time, this unit does lose the effectiveness of that damage reduction, leaving him with traces of what he used to have. He'll still be effective defensively, but not nearly as effective as he was when he started out. So as a result, over time, you are going to be gaining other stats, attack and defense, either by receiving attacks or launching attacks to help compensate for the fact that your damage reduction has decreased. So now your key plus five attack and defense plus 100% are amplified courtesy of the last few mechanics here in the passive. So that will make him still more effective but preferably a slot two character, especially if you can launch off an ultra super before he gets hit. 30% damage reduction after a, launching an ultra super that raises attack and defense after he's fully maxed it on the attack plus 50, defense plus 50 will make this Frieza just as defensively remarkable as he was when he started out. For the TURs out there, the only issue is health restriction. If your health is below 40%, you lose the damage reduction. If it's above 40, you will have the same 90% damage reduction across the board. So by comparison, it's really just a matter of styles in terms of how you guys play events. Do you want to have a unit that doesn't have any sort of health restriction or turn restriction, but loses the effectiveness of the damage reduction over time? Or would you rather have a crazy 90% flat uh, boost, well not boost, but 90% damage reduction ongoing throughout the entire fight as long as your health is above 40%? To me, this seems like the better option because I've also grown used to living with this restriction right here. So I've, I've formulated teams, I've run through events, anticipating the inevitability of a 40% drop taking place. If that happens, you have several options. Items, revives with other characters. You could even give this guy full dodge, which is what I do. Best decision I ever made in Dokkan, to be quite honest with you. Giving maximum dodge to your golden Frieza's. There's nothing better than that. Because when you fall below the threshold, this guy does have a little bit of damage reduction, but still it's not going to be enough. When you fall below you're in a really dangerous spot because this guy's supposed to be your slot one. If there's a super attack happening in slot one, you got 27 dodge, you throw this guy in slot one and you dodge it, boom, problem solved. You just got a 100% damage reduction for free. So I don't need this LR Golden Frieza, but I'm doing, I'm going to be summoning for content and plus I'm a whale. So really consider that when you're looking into this character. Also, of course, I always, I don't always do this. It's a shout out to one of my tunes who recommended I start to say this. Always consider beta testing the character first. Try to run the character through the friend system. If you get the unit on the friend system, you can run it on your team. Granted, the category um, effectiveness in terms of leader skill will drop because this guy is a abysmal 150% stat leader. But that's the cost of doing business with this character. You got you to gotta test him out, right? So bring a 200% leader, have this guy be your 150 friend lead that rounds out your team to 170%. Not bad. Dual Dokkan Festival leader type. And then see how he is. If you like the character, if you like how he functions, Maybe you can make do with simply just test driving him with the friend unit every once in a while. Or if you really, really want the character, you can go in and summon either with stones or with the Pilaf's Trove. For this Pilaf's Trove, I don't really know if it's going to be something uh, like I'm imagining. The last time a Frieza LR, I think the last time a Frieza LR got a premium legendary summon, I think it was the STR full power Frieza. 
where we got like 20 or 30 tickets we got a, a single multi with like 20 or 30 characters and a guaranteed featured ssr at the end and i think i actually got lucky on that one so you know this isn't a guarantee that you're going to be getting the end if you do buy this this will only avoid you having to spend your dragon stones uh in the interest of pulling a, a multi or two and if you happen to get the unit great if you don't well you're right back to where you started so is it worth the risk i personally don't think so i think you're better off saving remember folks since this is a yellow coin banner and you want to ultimately buy this character you will have to have invested 2500 dragon stones total across every yellow coin banner that exists to earn enough coins to actually buy the character remember this when i made this video before it was actually in red it wasn't in yellow uh this was 500 red coins 500 dokkan festival coins is equivalent to 2500 dragon stones that was when we were talking about how you needed to save those coins to buy these characters when they potentially come back later on down the road so the same concept applies to the legendary summon as well 50 dragon stones are needed to earn 10 coins that's a lot of dragon stones that's a lot of commitment for a dying banner that rarely sees the light of day these days we are surrounded by carnival coin banners these days that when is the next time this guy's going to be coming back so let's just say you don't want to summon let's say you throw 40 bucks 30 bucks however much they they cost on this one you throw your summon in there you don't get it but you're thinking to yourself you know what i'm gonna throw a couple more multis in because i'm about ready to buy a unit with the yellow coin okay january till the end of january that's when the banner releases when is it going to come back looking at the timeline not going to be happening right afterwards on the kid goku celebration that's not going to happen this is just going to be some generic random summon or it could even end up being a double rates banner because this time slot last year was when we received a double rates then the bardock one no saiyan day no the pre-golden week celebration will have yamcha and hachia goku probably together so that's another carnival summon so either this gets moved up to this slot right here where uh the february time slot is and then maybe this one becomes a legendary summon for some for some reason maybe so we could see maybe as early as april potentially so are you willing to spend all of the stones needed during this banner and then saving your stones or you know conceivably just not summoning all the way until you can maybe buy the unit back later in april that's that's a stretch you know i'm just kind of making an, a guesstimation here it could even be further on than that maybe it's part two for golden week maybe it's not going to be a carnival or maybe it'll be a legendary summon i don't know i just don't know where the legendary summon banner is going to be fitting anymore after golden frieza releases i feel like the gold yellow coin is just dead like what else is there i don't know that's, that's just my opinion so you also got to consider that so there's just so many different reasons that i feel like it's just not necessary to summon for this character it's an easy skip you really don't need it um you can always try it out with the friend unit like i mentioned so those are all the different factors that i would hope that you guys consider of course if you've made up your mind feel free to do what you got to do ultimately your satisfaction in the game is most important and if you do intend to summon best of luck to you but just remember everything that i said there are greener pastures coming up there is going to be potentially a very appealing saiyan day celebration you know of all the celebrations that we've got between now and eight year the two hurdles that i think will pose the biggest problems will be saiyan day and golden week because remember folks these two celebrations have to be good enough to entice jp players coming off of the eight year anniversary and see these and they are going to think oh you know what i want them they have to be good enough to appeal to character to players who have experienced the beauty of the eight year anniversary which by the way we will be getting a presentation for that next week so even if you want to summon for the golden frieza i would exercise restraint to at least wait until this happens so we can at least see what's going to be coming up because maybe just maybe whatever the units end up being it might be double spirit bomb it might be something else if it's something that is so good maybe it'll change the minds of a few of you that were hell-bent on summoning for this unit maybe you'll throw 90 percent less summons on this unit instead of uh throwing 300 you'll throw i don't know five stones i'm not talking about multi stones so you know think about all that all right that's it i'm done guys thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed the video be sure to leave a like down below let me know in the comments what do you guys think about all the things that i had to say about why you potentially should not be summoning for the golden frieza are you going to summon anyway how many stones are you going to put in if you do how many stones are you planning on saving between now and the eight year anniversary which is in july for global players are you planning on summoning for any banner in between let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below also be sure to subscribe for more dope content in the future and click the notification bell so that you let you know i want to see more of my stuff join Thanks again. Stay tuned and always remember to save responsibly. Ooh, ho, 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 ho. Don't summon for me.